good people of YouTube, Mount Batten here, and today we're going over some new ships announced last week in the dev blog. I covered these ships on stream, but I want to also give you guys coverage of this here on YouTube, and I don't want to be lazy and just uh, throw the stream clips up and throw them up here. So we're going to go through these ships, and I'm going to give you guys my two cents on each one, talk about their background a little bit. As you can tell, I am kind of annoyed that yet again wargaming has refused to include a certain ship that we will talk about here in a moment so um this dev blog is linked in the description down below you can check that out you can read along as i read aloud i will be throwing up any relevant images or artwork of these ships as we go through them so here we go new ships closed testing 11.7 american cruiser vallejo European destroyer Velos and British aircraft carrier Malta have been added to the game for testing. They start with the Vallejo, which is also a brand of model paint. I find that to be quite amusing. So, the Vallejo. One of the versions of the project which preceded the creation of the Wooster class cruisers. The main armament is 10 152mm dual purpose guns and 5 turrets. Vallejo is a light cruiser with improved ballistics and good firing range as well as a spotting aircraft consumable with an accelerated reload which allows her to fire effectively at long ranges. The ship's consumables are presented by the DFAA, repair party, in separate slots, as well as a rapid takeoff spot with fast reload and a fighter consumable in a single slot. At the same time, unlike other American high-tier cruisers, it has no hydroacoustic search and surveillance radar consumables. So as far as I can tell, uh, this ship, of course, wasn't ever really built. It is a design for the Wooster class, but, of course, this ship was never laid down. We just got the Woosters. This is a paper ship, a paper design of what would become the Wooster, kind of how the Florida is a paper design of what would become the North Carolina. So, for what we have here, it seems that this is a booster with improved ballistics. I suspect that this will probably have the Austin shell ballistics, so the good flight time to where you won't have the very long rainbow, just suborbital shells that many of the American light cruisers, destroyers, and other ships do have. And they are giving it what is essentially the uh, Lazo spotter plane. It has a 10 second reload or cooldown on that consumable to where you can keep firing at extended range for quite some time with the proper build. Now this is a tier 9 and not a tier 10 so I do believe that it, does, it, it is also missing I think a turret or two from the booster. I haven't played the booster in some time but it also does not have radar which is usually a uh, staple of the American cruiser lines. So very interesting. They do have the stats down here and we will be going over that here in a moment but continuing on down European Destroyer, the Velos, the Tier 9, and this is, well, as they say, one of the many Fletcher-class destroyers which was transferred to the Greek Navy in 1959. The destroyer has rapid-firing main battery guns and one torpedo launcher with fast reload. The ship also features good concealment and a smoke generator with a long smoke screen dispersion time. In addition to the smoke generator, the ship's equipment is represented by the engine boost and the DFAA consumables in separate slots. So... We have another Fletcher, which is still not the right Fletcher, and is what I'm referring to in the title, because this isn't the Johnston. Wargaming, give Johnston, please, we've been asking for years now. And it, it's really interesting seeing this Fletcher get added in. And, you know, I'm not I'm not hating on, you know, the, the Greeks finally getting a ship or anything in the game. It's just that they've stated several times that they don't want to just keep pumping in, like, the same class over and over and over again. Except we have, like, four or five of some ships in this game, you know. But a notable ship like the, the Johnston certainly deserves to be in this game. I mean, if you guys don't know, the Johnston was part of Taffy 3. It charged the, uh, well, what was left, essentially, of the Japanese Navy by itself, which included the uh, Yamato, and fought so fiercely that the Japanese Admiral uh, Kurita thought that it was a heavy cruiser charging its fleet formation and not a destroyer. And it fought so darn hard that when they finally managed to sink it, uh, the Yukikaze commander once... Uh, they had sunk in the Johnston, actually pulled up next to the Johnston and blasted it a couple more times with the main battery guns of the Yukikaze to make sure that the, that the ship was sunk this time, because they thought they sunk it like three or four times during the engagement, but the Johnston kept coming back. 
But yet again, instead of getting the Johnston, we get a post-war 1959 Cold War Fletcher. I mean, which is cool. It's cool seeing the Fletcher in a modernized version like this. I mean, Fletchers were used, I think, until like the 90s and even to the early 2000s. And some navies, like I believe the uh, the Navy of Mexico. And um, at that, I think uh, Turkey still operated some even into, I think, the the mid-2000s, I think. So, you know, it's cool seeing a ship class that had such a, lo a long service life be represented in all types of time frames and stuff. But, I mean, Johnston Wargaming. There's so many things you can do with a ship. You can, you know, copy-paste a kid with maybe a, uh, a couple of tweaks here and there, maybe a, a, a more improved um, heal and not as good AA. You could add in Ernest Evans, who was the commander of the Johnston during Taffer 3's engagement with Karita's forces as a unique commander. You give him an improved um, adrenaline rush skill, an improved, um, what's it called, preventive maintenance skill, just because of how many hits that ship took and how long she stayed in the fight. Or you could supercharge a Fletcher, put it at tier 10, give it a heal, give it an improved damage saturation effect, uh, give it a good reload, but short range, you know, to comp to, um, notify the fact that the ship engaged the Japanese at less than five nautical miles. You could do so much with the Johnston, it, it would be such an easy ship to add into the game, but yet they haven't done it. Now, I, I, I don't know why, maybe they're working on it, I don't know, but I mean, it, it's probably the only ship that would sell almost as good as a New Jersey on the North American server. If whenever they get around to adding in the, the New Jersey, because I'm, I'm sure they will eventually. You know, there's only so many ships left that they can keep adding into this game. But yeah, that 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 is a ship that will sell like absolute hotcakes on the North American server. I'm sure they know that, but it's just weird hearing them say, you know, they don't want to just keep adding in the same class over and over and over again. But here we are having another Fletcher that simply uh, isn't the Johnston. So that's my two cents on that. Again, it's cool that we're getting the Velos. It's cool that we're getting a 1950s, 1960s Fletcher. It's cool that we're getting a Greek ship, a Greek ship in the game game but it's just not the Johnston so that's my two cents on that and then we get to what uh, is a very interesting addition the, the, the British aircraft carrier Malta tier 10 a project of a large aircraft carrier with an armored deck which was developed during the war take into account the experience of military operation in the Pacific. The aircraft carries a large number of aircraft in the squadron and attack flight compared to the researchable British aircraft carriers. Another feature of the ship is that her dive bombers are attacking in a horizontal flight pa pattern and carry AP bombs. So, uh, the Malta was a ship that was planned and ordered by the Royal Navy in 1943, but the war ended and every single ship in her class was cancelled before their kills were even laid down and it was built with the lessons that the US Navy had learned during the Pacific campaign so that was taken into account into her designs so of course a well-armored flight deck and all that jazz which is very odd because the British carriers already in game have you know some of the best armor on their flight decks already so, I I, I, I I don't know, you already can't pin the things with even, like, Shikishima and stuff, so... Sure, uh, okay, we'll see what, where, where, uh, where that goes, and it is trading off the, the traditional level bombers with HE to level bombers with AP, which, um, I imagine is probably going to be quite terrifying. So, some stats that we have here for the new ship. So, the Vallejo, she has 44,000 hit points, uh, 25mm armor plating, 30 second fires, 5x2152s, and she has a base firing range of 16.7 kilometers. So you put the range model on that, and then you throw in the fighter, or I'm sorry, the, the, the spotter, which gives you a 20% boost to your range. You'll be able to, like, shoot easily, easily, I think, 20 kilometers with this cruiser. And keep in mind, too, that this fighter reloads in 10 seconds. You get five charges over, so six with uh, Superintendent. So, dang, so for, man, quite some time, you'll be able to just rain down HE from 21 plus kilometers away with guns that reload in five seconds space. So, ooh, this is, seems like they took the meme spotter plane booster build, which, uh, if you guys don't know, you can't take spotter plane on booster because booster is like every consumable known to man. And you can be dunking on ships from 20 plus kilometers in booster, but it takes the shells 30 seconds to get there. Now, with the improved ballistics of these guns, which they don't really include here, 
Um, I mean, she has the, the velocity of 762 meters a second, 812 meters a second for the HE. But of course, the air dragon stuff, that's the stats we need to know. That's not present in the dev blog. But I would assume it's basically a, a meme wooster build, but like actually viable now. So that's going to be uh, an interesting addition. Now the Velos, the tier 9, so she lost a turret. She only has four of the American 5-inch turrets. Firing range 12.1 kilometer space. Uh, maximum HE shell damage 1800. AP shell damage 2100. HE and AP come out the tube at 792 meters a second. Uh, she gets 1 by 5 of the 533s, which reload in 60 seconds. That's pretty nice. And they do a maximum damage of 19,033, which is also quite nice. Uh, max speed 38 knots, and the gun to reload, I should check that out, 2.2 seconds, that's a pretty quick reload time. Of course, you know, modernized guns, auto loaders, and the, and the like, or improved technology. She does not get a heal, though, which the uh, Fletcher itself does not normally get a heal anyway. So, the smoke generator, I'm assuming that is the American smoke generator as well. And what is her concealment? They said that she has good concealment. Um, yeah, da, 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 maximum damage, maximum speed, uh, oh, 6.9 kilometers base, so yeah, that is pretty good once, you, once you're able to build into it the commander skill and the module. Alright, and the Malta, the tier 10 new Royal Navy carrier. Hit points, uh, this is, I, funny right here, 666. Six, six. <laughs> uh, she has 66,600 max, uh, maximum hit points. So, um, yeah, take that and do with it what you will, community. Alright, so her attack aircraft, um, so for the attack aircraft, which is the rocket planes, you get four in an attacking flight, 12 aircraft, 12 aircraft per squadron, so you get three attacking flights per squadron, and the rocket planes reload in 64 seconds. You get 10 rockets in each payload, maximum rocket damage is 2,350 with 28 millimeters of armor pin, that's, uh, Pretty low, actually, for a tier 10 uh, carrier. That's not going to be able to pin, like, most tier 10 ships. Except for, like, the superstructure and maybe some, like, the battle cruisers. But, man, that, yeah, that's pretty not great. A 9% chance of causing a fire. Although she does get, you know, 10 rockets per payload. And you get 4 uh, planes per attack. So that's 40 rockets. So, yeah. Torpedo bombers, uh, 2,250 HP points. 136 cruising, 136 knots cruising speed, getting four aircraft in an attacking flight, 12 aircraft per, per squadron, 64 second regen time, and you get one torp per payload, maximum torpedo damage 5,933, torpedoes travel at 35 knots, they have a 2.4 kilometer range, they have a 470 uh, meter arming distance, okay, and you get four of those, so that's uh, about 20,000 damage, well, about 20,000 and 24. 24,000 and change maximum damage per torpedo run but they are pretty slow and then the uh bombers you get four bombers per pay of uh, i'm sorry you get yeah four five bombers per, per attacking flight my bad i got a little confused there 15 planes per squadron so you get it again three attacking flights per squadron 51 second restoration time that is really freaking fast uh, detectability range 10 kilometers, and you get 23 of those aircraft on deck. The previous two squadrons, you get 18 aircraft on deck. Four bombs per payload, so four bombs times that's 20 bombs. Uh, maximum bomb damage is 4,300. So that is wow. Four bombs per plane, so each plane's dropping like uh, shoots 16, 19,000 damage, and then you get five planes. And oh my god, that is whoa. You can see why they, the, the last two squadrons are a little lackluster there for that. Good God. Um, yeah, that's going to be quite scary. It is AP, though, so you do, of course, have to you know penetrate the Citadel to do any real damage with those bonds. But, guys, those are those new ships. We know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. What you guys think about uh, Johnston per perhaps being added in the future? Wargaming, please give Johnston eventually. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I'm on our way to 40,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.